Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. I hope students you all are well and fine and doing good. First of all, I really want to congratulate you that you are being the part of class 5 now. So welcome to class 5. My name is Zunaira and I'll teach you science. So are you ready for it? But before going towards our book, chapter, copy, we must know that why we have started learning like this. Interesting. Due to coronavirus. What are the coronaviruses? Basically, coronavirus is the name of family of viruses, which are having the crown-like structure over their surface. So that is why they are named as coronavirus, because corona is the word that indicates the crown. And the one and the virus which has been recently introduced, that is COVID-19. And this virus, what does it do? It causes the respiratory illness. Okay, so what should we do in, in such case? We should wash our hands again and again. We should not go out of our homes. Okay, stay at your home and be safe. But if we go out of the home, so use sanitizers repeatedly. So let's have a short review of your book. This is how your book looks like. So that is Paramount Science Awareness Five. Okay, this is the book cover and we are going to start at chapter number one of this book. And the chapter number one is on page number one. What is the name of the chapter? It is Understanding Living Things. Okay, so the name of chapter number one is Understanding Living Things. What are living things? See in the picture, all the things are the living. All the plants, all the animals, they all are the living things. Why we are calling them living things? There are some of the features due to which we call anything as living thing. What are these features? These are, they should made up of cells. They should grow and change. They need energy. They respond to environment and they reproduce. I'm going to repeat. There are five common features which are there in, the, in all the living things. Okay. All the living things are made up of cells, they grow and change, they need energy, and the energy which is needed that is utilized by the body as well. How it is happening? We are going to know further. Number fourth thing is they respond to their environment. And number fifth is they reproduce. Fine. So now these are the five common features. Okay. If these thing, if one of these things is missing from anything, so that thing could never be the living. Okay. Now we are we are just going to know these features in detail one by one. Okay. So number one is they are made up of cell. Before going towards the next slide, we must know that what is cell. Yes. Let's begin. Let's see what is a cell. So here I've written very simple. In clear definition, the basic, the basic unit of living body, the basic living unit of living body. Okay, so all the plants, animals, even bacteria and viruses are made up of cells. So all the living things are having their basic unit as cell. What comes first in your mind when you look at this wall? This wall is made up of what? Bricks, yes, this is made up of bricks. You can see that all the bricks are arranged in a manner that one after another, one onto another, and likewise, they have created a strong body. Likewise, our body is made up of millions of the tiny particles which are called cells. Okay, and these are very basic units. They all come together, they combine together, they make our organs, they make our body. Not only our body, but the plant body as well. Okay, so it is the basic unit of living body. This is how it looks like. There are different kinds of cells. All the cells are having different shapes. Their sizes are different. But we are not going to, uh, we are not supposed to discuss them here. Okay, so we know that number first feature was they are made up of cells. So what is the cell? We came to know here. Okay. So according to the number of cell, 
we have divided the living things into two kinds. Types of living things according to the number of cells. Unicellular organisms, multicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms are those who are made up of only one cell. Those organisms which are made up of only one cell. Okay, so if they are made up of only one cell, so of course they are going to be very tiny. Their size is going to be very, very tiny that we cannot observe them with our naked eye. Okay, so these organisms can never be seen with the naked eye. If we cannot see them with naked eye, so what should we do? We should use the microscope. This microscope is a kind of apparatus which makes smaller objects appear bigger. Okay, so for this purpose, to uh, to see the living organisms which are, on, which are made up of only one cell or which are unicellular, so we can use the microscope to see them. The best example is amoeba. Okay, so apart from amoeba, all the viruses, all the bacteria, they all are made up of only one cell. Okay, so the, they, they all come in unicellular organism category. On the other hand, multicellular organisms, as uni means one, multi means many, multi means several, okay? More than one, more than two, millions, trillions, and so on. So multicellular organisms are those who are made up of only, who are made up of more than one cell. They are made up of they can be made up of two cells they can be made up of three cells they can they can be made up of more than three more than four hundreds thousands lakhs millions and billions there can be several of the cells in their body okay so they, their size is going to be bigger than okay so we do not need to use microscope to see them okay they can be also tiny like and grasshopper caterpillar many of the worms are there they are they are, they are multicellular but we can observe them with our naked eye okay so this is how all the thing remember all the living things are made up of cells all the living things are made up of cells this number of the cells can vary in different organ different uh, you can say different living things Okay, so those living things which are having only one cell, they are the unicellular organisms. Those who are made up of more than one cell, they are they are made up, they are called multicellular organisms. Got it? So if we talk about the example of multicellular organism, so human beings are there, and all the living things which you can see around you, they all are multicellular organisms. Number th one thing was they are made up of cells. Number two is living things grow and change. Okay, so living things grow and change. How do they grow? How do they change? So like puppies into dog like this. Birds into flowers. Child into adult like this. Seeds into plants like this. Okay, the heading, uh, the heading is living things grow and change. Okay, this is how the puppy changes into dog, seed changes into plant, and a baby or a child changes into adult or a younger one. Okay, so they all things grow and all are going to be changed with the time. Okay, so if we see the seed or if we talk about us, so we are born with a smaller size but slowly and gradually we change our size we change our height we become taller and taller year by year with this change with this growth we also change okay our features are changed our eyes are bigger now our body is bigger now and we are taller now we have increased our height Okay, but at certain stage, we stop increasing our height. Okay, but if we talk about plant, so let's talk about growth of the plant first. You can see the seed is buried into the soil, but 
with the time it grows into a plant the smaller plant then the bigger one then the bigger one then the biggest one then it can be the tree okay and if we talk about the plants one important thing plants keep on growing as long as they live i told you that we stop our height or our growth or changes are being stopped at certain stage but if we talk about the plants plants keep on growing as long as they live okay we keep on growing as long as they live how we if plant lives for 100 years or 200 years it does not stop its growth so we have not seen any plant so much taller hmm so it means that they grow their leaves after some time they shed off their leaves then their leaves are again grown then shed off likewise this process is happening until and unless plant is alive okay so this is how number 3 thing is living things need energy all the living things need energy okay number 1 was all are made up of cells number 2 is living things grow and change number 3 is living things need energy all the living things need energy plants plus animals if we talk about the plants so plants do a kind of process named as photosynthesis the name of the process is photosynthesis it is so simple photo means light photo means light synthesis indicates to synthesize something okay so they are going to synthesize their food in the presence of light okay so what is it the process by which plants prepare their food in the presence of sunlight is called photosynthesis now see in the diagram this plant uh, this sun is just giving the rays to the plant okay sunlight is there and what is doing what the plant is doing plants are absorbing carbon dioxide roots are absorbing water and all these three things combine together they react together in return they make the food they prepare the food for their own and for us as well in the form of fruits and vegetables okay apart from this they release energy they give us the oxygen that is the oxygen we inhale okay so by this process we get the oxygen and by this process carbon is getting a car uh, uh, sorry plant is getting a carbon dioxide okay where does this process happen this process can only happen in chlorophyllous parts of the plants such as leaves why i have written this word with green do you know chlorophyll is something or a substance which is always green that is always green okay so the green substance in the plant is called chlorophyll and the parts are called chlorophyllous parts okay so what what are the parts which are green in the plants mostly the leaves sometimes stem is also green so whatever portion of the plant is green that is due to chlorophyll that is a substance in the in the leaves in the stem if it is in the stem so stem will be green it is in the leaves so leaves are the green all the animals and all the plants need energy okay animals plants do photosynthesis what do we do if i talk to you about this that how do we get energy everybody would say that we get the energy by eating food you are right but remember one thing food cannot give us energy until and unless it does not have the oxygen okay so we eat the food but that is that would be the useless stuff in our stomach until and unless it do not it does not react with the food uh, with the oxygen okay when it reacts with the oxygen it releases energy that is utilized by our body okay so respiration is very important to get the energy okay so we get the energy by the process called respiration what is it simply breathing 
the inhaling of oxygen and exhaling of carbon dioxide is called respiration or breathing there is a slight uh, there's a you can say this there's a difference in breathing and respiration what is it we are going to discuss that thing in the next chapter because there's going to be a, a major topic in the next chapter okay so we get the energy by respiration if we talk about human beings so human beings respire by lungs okay air goes into our uh, goes into the nostrils first then into the trachea after the trachea it goes into our lungs and here the oxygen is absorbed by the body and carbon dioxide is released by the body that released carbon dioxide comes out through mouth or nostrils okay so this is how we get the energy but if we talk about fish so fish does not have the lungs so that is why they are having the gills these gills are supportive to absorb the oxygen from water okay so gills are the uh, main organs of the fish by which they absorb the oxygen from water okay or we can say they are aspired by gills if you talk about insects all the insects respire through same way what is this way in their body there are tiny holes these tiny holes are called as spiracles air enters into the body of the insect through spiracles okay it goes into their body in their body there is a trachea like we are having trachea here they are also having the trachea in their body okay and in the trachea there are the air sacs but again i'm telling you that i'm not going to the detail because it is discussed in the next chapter okay so this is how they absorb the oxygen or they take in air and just give out air okay through these small openings or hole so this is how the animals respire and get the energy because they need oxygen okay so the the fourth thing is living things respond to their environment okay all the living things respond to their environment how do they do it so simple if we talk about the human beings and animals they sense their environment with the help of their sense organs okay and how many sense organs do we have five eyes nose ear tongue and skin these are our five organ five sense organs through which we sense our environment okay number 2 is they find food and shelter who human beings and animals okay they find food they consume the food they get the energy in the presence of oxygen plus they find the shelter as well because they feel hot or cold if we talk about the animal whenever they feel cold or hot they find the shelter okay but if we talk about the plants plants do not have sense organs they do not have skin they do not have eyes nose ear tongue so how do they respond to their environment let's see they don't need to catch food because they prepare their own okay why they will uh, catch the food because they are doing the photosynthesis that is done in the presence of sunlight and by which they are preparing their food inside their body so they don't need to catch the food from any outside source okay so they make their they make the food for their own plus for us as well uh in the form of fruits and vegetables apart from this they don't need shelter as well because they need sunlight if we get, if they get the shelter how do they get the and how do they get the solar energy then okay so they they don't need the shelter they get the energy with the solar uh, solar in the form of solar energy they convert this energy to make their food okay and with this process they give us oxygen as well so they do not need any shelter okay if we talk about one of the example that how do the plants how do plants respond to the environment one of the example is here some of them respond to light by turning their leaves and flower like sunflower do you know sunflower is having a special kind of ability that to which uh, what happens 
as the sun arises from east and goes down to the west the, the direction of the sunflower and its leaves just turns as the sun uh, changes the direction okay this is how the sunflower works if you talk about touch me not this plant is in indicating by the by its name as well okay this plant can sense the touch sense okay whenever something or uh, something or if we touch them they will turn on their they will, they will turn their leaves if we touch them the last and we can say one of the most important is living things reproduce living things have to reproduce because they have to increase their population they have to make uh, they have to increase their number okay what is this the process by which living organisms will give birth to its new individual directly or indirectly is known as reproduction all the living things are supposed to have reproduction but there are different ways how do they do it number one thing all living things reproduce that is so clear human human beings give birth to babies okay we all know that human beings give birth to babies but if we talk about the animals there are two of the ways by which an animal can reproduce uh, different organ and different animals reproduce in a different way there are two ways either they lay eggs or they give birth to their new individuals like if we talk about the birds okay all the birds lay eggs but if we talk about the mammals like goat cat dog camel they all give birth to their new individuals or babies if we talk about the plants so plants reproduce uh, plant reproduce by seeds how plants produce seeds in their in their fruits and vegetables in their flowers sometime as well from which the new plant can come out when that seed is just uh, just in the contact with soil or buried in the soil so it can grow into a new plant okay this is how the plant increase their number these were five main features of living things okay one cannot uh, one thing can never be the living thing if any of these thing is missing all the living things are made up of cells all the living things grow in change all the living things need energy all the living things respond to their environment all the li uh, living things reproduce that was all about your book and chapter okay but it is not done here we have to do some of the copy work as well okay so listen to my instruction very carefully uh, these all are written here very clearly and you have to uh, you have to check them out very clearly okay number one thing is write the name outside the copy see this is the cover of your copy okay i have written here fatma as an example you are going to write your class your section okay your section would be same as class 4 here you are going to write science copy 1 science copy 1 okay science copy 1 and science copy 2 two Sci two copies will be given for the science okay so one will be science copy 1 another would be science copy 2 remember you are not going to write science test copy and so on you are just going to write science 1 and science 2 okay what do you have to do let a uh, short uh, fast review of it okay write class and subject maintain the index leave page for syllabus make title page write subtitles on the title page mention date on the red line copy down the work from worksheets okay chapter number 1 has been done for the chapter number 1 worksheet 1 will be given that would be copied down into the into, uh, in your copy okay if the headings are there put all the headings with blue color pens write all the questions with blue color pencil write all the answers with sharp pens okay so this is how you are going to maintain your name bar here after opening your copy you will get first page like this this would be your page of the index okay first of all you are going to write the midterm heading with your blue color pencil 
okay so you are going to write you are going to mention the date over here on which you will be given the worksheet or on which you will be uh, doing your work okay you will write the name of the chapter you will write how many question answers one till five question answers there okay reasons are there name these are there this is how you are going to maintain your index afterwards after turning two pages of indices you will get a lined page here you have to do nothing right now just put the heading of midterm okay in syllabus you can write because afterwards you will be given syllabus and that would be pasted here okay after turning this page you will have a lined page and a blank page on the blank page you are going to make your title page on the title page you are going to write the name of the chapter that is understanding living things okay afterwards you are going to write subtitles subtitles would be written on the same page so five questions are there five reasons are there and five names these are there okay these subtitles will be mentioned here on this red line you are going to write the heading uh, sorry uh, here you are going to put the date and from here you are going to start your work and your work should be very neat and clean and done with sharp pencil that should be very clean tidy and good okay and good writing as well so i hope you have understood all of the things so uh, take care and remember me in your prayers thank you so much bye